What's up guys, welcome back to the channel. Today is the first part of a three-part series for your bench press. We're gonna cover a lot. Mainly, number one, if you have shoulder pain when you bench press, I'm gonna teach you how to set your shoulders so they're not getting hurt, so you're keeping yourself safe. Number two, if you have a wrist pain, I'm gonna show you some things to keep your wrist safe and healthy. Number three, obviously, help you increase your bench press strength so that you're actually getting stronger and lifting more weight. I'm not going to say in this moment to like the video and subscribe. I actually first wanna let you know that I'm at 24-hour fitness right now and I'm almost positive the guy who was right there farted and then left. I'm just gonna put that out there. I think you just heard me say that. We're gonna keep going though. In the meantime, if you do like the video and if you don't subscribe yet, definitely do it because we're gonna have a lot more content. Already got like 500 videos you might not have seen yet. Anyway, we're gonna get in the video and start off with the first tip to help your bench press. The first thing we're gonna cover is your wrist position, which I know sounds super boring, but number one, if you're having wrist pain, this is gonna help a lot. Number two, a lot of people don't realize this, but if you have a poor wrist position, you're gonna have bad force transfer, which long story short, means you're not gonna be able to be as strong as you wanna be in the bench press. And this tip is gonna help you fix that. If your wrist isn't in a good position, it's because of the way you're setting up. And what happens is a lot of people, when they're setting up for the bench press, is they just reach right up, grab the bar and unrack it. They don't have any specific setup. They don't make sure their wrist is in a good position. And when you do that, you end up getting the bar too high in your palm. And when the bar is too high in your palm, you're gonna see that your wrist is bending backwards. And this is number one, why a lot of people have wrist pain when they bench press. And they'll get wrist wraps to try and sort of put a bandaid on the bullet wound, but they don't actually fix it. They don't actually take the bullet out. They don't actually put body armor on, right? the wrist straps just sort of mask the problem. So what you wanna do is instead of just grabbing the bar and unracking it and making the bar high in your palm, what you actually wanna do is from the setup, be very slow and controlled and deliberate. And instead of just grabbing onto the bar and having the bar too high in your palm, you actually wanna slide your hand all the way up and get the bar as low in your palm as possible before you wrap your thumb around the bar. Now pay attention. When you drive with the bench press, you actually wanna drive through the outer bottom portion of your palm. When you do that, you get the most efficient force transfer directly into your bone and your wrist without stressing your joints. From here, once the bar is as low in your palm as you possibly can, then you wrap your thumb around the bar. Then you pinch the bar really tight and you grip it and you make sure that your elbow and your wrist and the bar are all in one line. This is an efficient force transfer. This is the safest, strongest position. From here, you unrack it and now you're in a good position to bench press with a strong, efficient force transfer from your elbow all the way through your wrist into the bar rather than having the bar too high up in your palm, your wrist bending backwards, causing a whole lot of joint damage and not allowing you to be as strong as you actually are. Now that you understand wrist position, we're gonna go into how to better control the descent so you can be stronger off of your chest, which is where most people are the weakest. But before we do, if you have any questions on wrist position, put them in the comment section so I can answer them for you. All right, before we go into the second one, two things. Number one, there's someone lifting in the background who just keeps clicking and clicking and clicking. It's in my head and it's driving me insane, but I'm gonna try and get through it. I'm gonna try and get through it for you, all right? If, if you haven't liked the video yet, make sure you like it because I'm doing this for you. Second thing is, I'm a big believer in giving credit where credit is due. I think that's not done enough in the fitness industry. And I wanna let you know that I didn't come up with this cue. It was actually taught to me by my buddy, Adam Pine, amazing coach, incredible power lifter. He taught this back to me in about 2012 and it really took my bench press to a new level. Um, it's a simple cue. It's a very simple mindset shift when you're bench pressing, where essentially what you'll see a lot of people doing when they bench press is they control the top half of the lift, even the, like the, the first 90% of the lift all the way down. But when they get to about just above their chest, they just let it bop, drop and then use momentum to get it back up. And they just the reason they do this is because people are weakest right on their chest. It's where the leverages are the worst. It's the hardest to get it off your chest. So rather than control it all the way down, they use momentum to pop, pop it right back up and then it's ego lifting. You can use more weight that way, but you're not actually strengthening your muscles in the best way. And one of my favorite sayings from Louis Simmons is, you're only as strong as your weakest link. And that part is your weakest link. And the more you continue to ignore it and bypass it, the 
less you will ever actually be able to reach your full strength potential because you're literally just trying to bypass your weakest link through using momentum and speed. What you wanna do and the cue that Adam taught me is to think of your chest as a sheet of glass. And it's obviously very delicate. You don't want to just control the bar down and then smash the glass. Otherwise your chest is gonna be smashing all over the fucking place. But what you actually wanna do is control it. So when the bar touches that glass, nothing happens. Then you can press, that, press the bar back up really strong. And keep in mind, this is really important. Most lifters will not follow my instructions here because most lifters are ego lifting. And when you start doing this, you'll have to lower the weight because that last inch, half inch or so, is super difficult. And if you've never really trained it like you should, that means that you are starting from ground zero again. You're gonna get back up to your strength and eventually get stronger than you ever would if you hadn't done it before. It takes time to really be able to put your ego at the door, put yourself in check, and really be like, listen, this half inch, this inch right here, this is what I need to control. Slowly lower it down, don't break the glass, own the bar, control the bar, be deliberate with the bar, then press back up. And if you can do this consistently, you will get stronger in the bench press than you ever would have otherwise with that stupid technique where you just bounce it off your chest. Here it goes again. It's crazy. Tick. Tick. <laughs> Tick. The last technique that we're gonna cover in this video is specifically to keep your shoulders safe and healthy and pain-free. A lot of people struggle with painful shoulders from bench pressing and you don't have to. It does not have to be painful. And I wanna show you how you can keep your shoulders in the best position so that your shoulders are stronger and safer, you're bench pressing more weight, and you're not getting any sharp shooting pains as well. Now, before we go into it, if you have not yet gave this video a thumbs up or subscribed, what the fuck are you doing? You got dude over here crop dusting and farting, Guy over there making crazy noises with his tricep press down. It's like doing this for you. So please subscribe, give it a thumbs up, leave a comment if you have any questions. But now let's get into the third technique, which is shoulder position. A lot of people make a huge mistake and they don't realize it. But what they do is they let their shoulders come out really, really, really far. And what happens is when you do this, when your shoulders are really far out and your scapula are what's called protracted, then your shoulders are inherently in an unstable position. It is really, really, really dangerous because you have no stability here. And what happens is when you come down from this position, it's easy for your shoulders to come up towards your ears. And when that happens, that's when you get shoulder impingement. That's when you, a lot of times, tear rotator cuff. That's when you get that sharp shooting pain in the front of your shoulder. So what you wanna do here is instead of letting your shoulders come all the way out, you wanna do what's called retract your shoulder blades. And what that looks like is, your arms are gonna be straight either way. All that's, the only thing that's different is you're essentially pinching your shoulder blades together. And you can see the difference in height in the bar, where the bar is really, really, really high up and my shoulders are out. And then all I do is I pinch my shoulder blades together and I send my shoulders down and back. Think about putting your shoulders in your back pocket. When you think about putting your shoulders in your back pocket while pinching them together, you're activating your lats, you're attracting your shoulder blades, and you're keeping them in a strong and stable position. This is the ideal and optimal position for bench pressing because now your shoulders aren't, they aren't unstable. Now they are very controlled, very stable. You're in a very strong, safe position. A lot of times people who struggle with shoulder pain from bench pressing, it's not an issue with their shoulder structure. It's not like they have something actually wrong with their shoulders. They're just not putting themselves in a safe position to bench press. What you can do is you can practice this without even being on the bench press or without even a bar in your hand. Just hands up, pinch your shoulder blades together. Hands up, pinch your shoulder blades together. And you can see me doing this on the bench press. I'll do this before I actually start lifting just to make sure I'm in the right position. And the more you do this, the more it becomes natural, the stronger your bench press is gonna get, the less pain you're gonna have in your shoulders, and ideally you won't have any pain at all. I hope this video helped. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them in the comment section below. Again, one last time, just in case, give it a thumbs up. Subscribe if you haven't already. Make sure you hit the bell to get notified every time a video comes out because apparently YouTube doesn't like to tell people unless uh, you hit that bell, which respect, I get it. You know, maybe you don't want to be notified, but if you do want to be notified, hit the bell. New video comes out. This is only part one. Of, I don't even know how many parts we're going to do. Maybe three, maybe 12. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. I love you. Have an amazing day. And uh, just, just for, 
the sake of everybody in the gym. Don't go crop dusting around. I mean, straight, holy shit. Just sat in his musk for the last however many minutes this video is. Probably even longer because Rico's going to cut it down. So it's going to be shorter when you watch it. Like we just sat here for half an hour and this. I love you. Talk to you soon.